Hey everybody, the sun is about to set and I thought this might be a nice time to talk about what is growing here, what's starting to sprout, what's flowering, what's producing. Tomorrow is actually our last average frost date. So with any luck, we've passed it because we had two nights of frost about five days ago and now we're up in the 80 degree Fahrenheit during the day and barely getting in the 50s at night. So with any luck, these things will be sticking around. So here's what's up. These are the blueberries that you saw uh, Tracy and Kaylin and myself planting. That's the powder blue, blue, blue blueberry, de blah, 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 going here. And it looks like it has taken to its new home pretty well. We have lots of flowers and I personally saw a bumblebee working on this earlier today so i'm pretty excited about that and here is the austin rabbit eye again they're not perfect companions for each other uh, they're supposed to bloom just a little bit differently uh, they're blooming now but that is coming from the store uh, from a greenhouse so perhaps they won't bloom so well together next year but we'll just wait and see right now it looks like they transplanted well and that's what matters look at this this is the memorial planting for uh, Jennifer's father. This is a methley plum, and that is the most that we've ever had bloom on this tree. And I'm guessing, looking around, you can see that we're starting to get leaves to come out. So I'm thinking these are going to be the blooms that we get this year, uh, but that's more than before, uh, so I'll take it. You can see I didn't prune it back too bad. I wanted it to grow this year. Uh, I pruned out some, uh, some cross branches in the middle, uh, but we'll see where that goes. We planted peas around the bottom of all of our uh, different plants, really because I didn't have anywhere else to set up to try to trellis them. So these have taken a bit of a hit. You can see uh, they had some frost damage from the frost a couple nights ago. Uh, and also it has been dry the last few days, but we watered them really good yesterday and it's supposed to be a pretty good rain in a couple days. So I hope they'll bounce back. Nana's Rose is doing stellar. You can see all the red, all the new growth on it. The real big key for Mama's Rose or for Nana's Rose this year is to balance it out. Uh, we had a contractor on the property last summer, last spring, and they literally ran over half the bush. So you can see there's all this growth to the back and not much up front. So this year, this is supporting new growth down here. And then at the end of the year, we'll kind of balance this whole thing out, or at least that's the plan. Now we have these uh, three apple trees. This is a Granny Smith. Uh, this one is a double delicious. It has red and golden delicious on it. There's a graft in the middle. It put out about two blossoms last year, and obviously we didn't get any apples off of that. And this one is just a golden delicious, and it is yet to flower. Uh, neither has the Granny Smith I showed you to begin with. So we're hoping maybe we'll get something out of those this year, but so far nothing's gone. I haven't done a video on it yet, but I'll give you a little sneak peek. The bats, they're still here. We have a raspberry vine growing on this. You can see it has started to leaf out. It should start putting out flowers very soon, at least in this heat we've started to have. There's another section of vine coming up over here. And you can see we've planted peas all along that as well. Uh, this is a persimmon. It has not come up yet, and I'm a bit worried about this little olive tree. I don't know if it made it through the winter. We'll just have to wait and see. This is a grafted apple tree. Uh, this was a tree that I grafted as part of the Master Gardener's course, and I'm pretty sure it's still alive. Um, I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it got too cold. You know, apple trees are pretty darn cold hardy, but it is just you know a twig. Uh, but but we'll see. And unfortunately, I was really hoping to see more on this. This is uh, the red bud tree that you saw Jennifer and I ran out and, and bought. And you can see we're starting to get a little bit of growth. Let me focus in on that. Nope, it's not going to do it for me. Well, anyway, there's a little bit of growth right there. And there's a uh, another little spot or two up here where we're starting to get leaves to come out. So the good news is hopefully a successful 
transplant. So <clears throat> we'll see there. Okay, let's run up over here to the north side of the driveway. This is Grandma Lonnie's memorial planting and you can see we're starting to get leaves coming out on it. So we're pretty excited about that. Now what's interesting is that this uh, Royal Empress tree had no roots to speak of whatsoever on it. And the reason that's interesting is because way over there is another Royal Empress tree that we planted. This one had a couple roots. They weren't anything really to write home about, but they were there. And yet, nothing to really speak of yet. But this one does get a lot more shade, as you can see. So, maybe it's just going to take a little longer. These are a series of pawpaw trees, uh, or custard apple, or apple custard, or I can't remember what the different terms are for these things. You almost can't even see it. It's a twig sticking out there. We had a problem here where uh, I mapped this out on a, on a level. There's that one, and that one, and that one. And you can see them from the piles of mulch there. Uh, but the problem was... I didn't pay attention to them. I thought they were going to be just fine. And then the weeds grew up and we had vines actually pull down on these things. And you can see this one here uh, is going to need a bit of straightening. <laughs> we really don't want it growing like that. But what's uh, good news is it is growing. You see a little bit of green leaf coming on that one. So here, uh, this one is the Pennsylvania Golden Pawpaw. So... And then let's see this one here. You can also see where the vine has pulled it over. Uh, no growth yet on that one. So we will just have to wait and see. But holy grape arbor, Batman. I mean, look at this. Uh, so I came in here and uh, over right at the beginning of winter, I covered this up with weed mat. I poked holes in the weed mat and I planted some garlic. And then I topped all that off with some wood chips. And uh, probably about 20% of the garlic came up, which, to be honest, I was more concerned with blocking out the weeds than I was with getting the garlic. But uh, that just goes to show you that's probably not the best way to try to get garlic to come up. <laughs> it, uh, it did not find its way through the weed mat very well. But check this out. We've got leaves on our grape arbor already. Uh, that is specifically a... Uh, Oh goodness, Niagara. That's a Niagara table grape. And over here, we're starting to get leaves off of the Concord as well. Um, <clears throat> those are a little harder to see here on the camera, but right, right, right there. And the Muscadines are starting to uh, leaf out as well. They're just a little more sporadic, uh, but they're there. Uh, down here, the cat mint has not started growing, but that oregano is loving it. Uh, we have one little sage seedling coming up right there in the middle of the screen. Um, parsley, same thing. Just a, a couple little seedlings down there. Stop that camera. However, look at this. This is the Deep South Homestead. Let me zoom in on it. That's the Deep South Homestead garlic chives. Those are coming up. Um, most of the time cuttings that we took are still doing well, but I don't see any seedlings, I don't think. This is the cilantro. It's coming up pretty good. And I am pretty sure this speck of green here in the field that is supposed to be comfrey is grass. Oh well, we'll keep trying. We still haven't finished mulching this uh, line of black locust that we put in. It's interesting to see how many people like that we're planting it and how many don't. But you can see that uh, they're starting to uh, produce. We got leaves coming out on the twigs. That one is the rock star. Uh, but it's, it's always interesting to me because this next one was the only one that had green on it when we planted it. And it's doing well. Uh, I mean, there's nothing to be shy about there, but the other one uh, <laughs> is beating it. And it appeared to be more dormant when we started. Now, the two on the ends here, 
Oh, this one's starting to come out a little bit too. Uh, but the ones on the end get the most shade, so I guess that's why they're going to take a little bit longer. Hopefully we can still try to get uniform growth in the long run. This is that area that was supposed to be a uh, wildflower garden. Yeah, the natives are kind of winning on us here. Uh, but I want to show you this. This is another methylene plum. Check that out. Now, methylene plums are quote-unquote self-pollinating, but quote-unquote do better with multiple plantings of the same tree. So we will see how that goes. Uh, you can tell this is not a very healthy specimen, uh, but we will see. We will see. This was a bonfire peach, which is more of a something pretty to look at, and I think it died. But what you can see happening over here, if you're familiar with the plant, are the gladiolas. Um, there's a couple coming up there. Part of this line is coming up here. And even further down the hill are some. And if you go back and look, you'll notice there were some next to uh, Nana's Rose, too, that I forgot to show you. So uh, maybe we'll get a little bit more of this to come up, even if we do have a dog bomb on the video. All right, so this is where the lime and lemon tree are that we don't know. We're, we're probably going to go ahead and replace those because they are supposed to be grafted, and we think they died all the way back down to the roots a couple years ago. They ought to have started put off, putting off uh, flowers. Uh, at least we would have expected it, and they're not, so we're not sure about that. But you can see that the uh, daffodils are liking this area, and those uh, pansies are enjoying it as well. And all of our mums, there's uh, one on the far left there, one in the middle, and then there's just a little tiny baby one that still lived over on this side. Uh, we're kind of happy that those are going to pull through, some a little better than others. So this is kind of a disappointing patch. This is supposed to be a whole bunch of dill, and I think that is all I have to show for it. It all started coming up, and then we had a frost, and that one little section managed to not get covered. That was a real shame. So probably a busted year on dill for me. Uh, but look at Mama's strawberry beds. I'm just going to walk this real nice and slow. Let you take a look at them. Uh, some of them need to be harvested, but Mama's been down with a migraine for the last two days. And uh, Daddy's been doing all the parenting stuff. And I just hadn't bothered, but we have been out here eating them, juicing them, snacking on them, slicing them up and adding them on top of pancakes, all sorts of fun things like that. So uh, very happy with how this raised bed garden is producing. You want some, don't you? Yeah, me too. The potato garden is doing pretty well. You can see that the challenge we're having uh, is ununiform growth. So like these up here are only about an inch over, uh, an, an inch tall, inch over the soil. Uh, but down here I'm going like almost two inches over the actual container. Uh, so I'm, I'm running into a difficult situation wondering how I'm going to backfill this. How do I decide when I'm going to fill in? Because even in the same situation, here, I've got this big guy, but way down in there is, uh, well, you can't even see the thing. Well, there you go. Uh, just barely starting to sprout up. So I come out here probably every other day and rotate this container around to try to give it a different light exposure. But that's the challenge I'm running into. And my uh, purple potatoes haven't sprouted at all yet. So I'm really kind of... I'm sad. The winter garden is nothing to look at. I want you to know that right now because it has been bug eaten and we have uh, not been harvesting on it in some time, but there it is. Uh, so we still have uh, collards growing up at the top. Uh, you can see the kohlrabi. This one is more just leaves, but this one's got a nice little three inch bulb coming on it. Uh, you can see we've had a couple things start going to seed oh and it's too heavy for me to turn one-handed right now um, our pine berry 
is doing really well. Look at this. Look at this. I didn't know this. I just surprised myself right here making the video. An actual pine berry. That would be our very first ever pine berry. This is the second season for this plant. That's pretty exciting. That's pretty exciting. I can't wait to share that with Mama when she's feeling a little bit better. This is the third growth coming off this broccoli. That's why it looks so horrendous. It's been cut on so much. But look at it. It's still coming out. Uh, carrots. We've harvested some, but we're trying to let them plump up a little bit more before we harvest any others. They basically came out like baby carrots, but they were good and deep. Uh, really enjoying using these deep pockets uh, to make carrots. This is uh, parsley. It's doing really well. And then over here we have uh, some chard. Looks like my bib lettuce is going to bolt on me. Um, different kinds of kale, other collards, all growing. This kale did not do well. <laughs> it, I don't. I, I forget which one that is. What one is that? I just wrote red kale, so I don't know if there's another variety besides just red kale, but. It did not do well in our climate. I don't think it had anything to do with the container. Maybe bad seed, heck who knows. Never mind the mop bucket. I ain't got no time to clean up before making a video. But here are the avocado trees. We've got two that are growing good and one that has died. I'll be calling the company uh, here probably tomorrow. Uh, I think I've completely given up hope that this is somehow going to bounce back and, uh, and let them know that... Sorry, we are two out of three. Refund or replace, and I hope that they replace it. You remember when I did the raspberry canes and I just laid them flat in here? And then right at the end of that video, or, or like out of nowhere, I decided, hey, I found some more cane and I was going to put them in the containers, those deep-rooted pots. Boy, am I glad I did. Because those ones are growing. Look at them. I've had one die. Uh, that was alive maybe about four or five days ago. It may, it may have died in the cold. Uh, but the rest of them are growing. And you can kind of see we're getting about the same results with the acorns. I've had a couple die out. But I've got others that are still pushing through. So that's exciting to see. But probably the saddest thing I can share with you on the whole property is this. This was my seed starting tray. I had my... Uh, tomatoes that I got out of the seed carousel box from Deep South Homestead in there, my own tomatoes, my borage that's supposed to go into that sock, and all those kind of things. And the very first day it got 80 degrees, I forgot all about this, and they baked. I still had my lid right here sitting on top of them, and they just baked. Oh, that's a hard lesson to learn. And then if things couldn't get any worse, you remember what is supposed to be growing in here? Our vardamin potato, our sweet potato. And I have got squat. I don't know if it's because the soil is staying too moist, if the soil is too heavy that it can't germinate or send up... Um, oh goodness, I just totally lost it. Send up draws or slips. Uh, from the sweet potato. I don't know what it is, but sweet potatoes are not going to be a thing this year. All right, last stop. We're back here at the fish pond, and I forgot to point out that the Egyptian walking onions, those were planted up there by that raspberry cane. So if you go back and check that out, those on either side uh, are also doing well and starting to put out a flower head. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, and things back here are 90% uh, good. Uh, so we have some things that we planted last year, uh, like down here I've got creeping thyme uh, that are alive. Uh, it shouldn't be any bigger than that. It overwintered and now we're waiting for it to expand. Uh, but something you probably can't really make out was supposed to be some uh, golden marjoram. And I'm just not sure, I'm just not sure if that's going to live or not. <laughs> Maybe there's enough there that it comes back. Here's hoping. Uh, but otherwise, we've got uh, another uh, mounding marjoram oregano over here. Uh, and, of course, you can see we have 
pansies around the place. Uh, this is chamomile, it's doing pretty well. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't yet seen our lemongrass pop back up. That should have overwintered just fine. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, that there is banana mint, our rosemary, and this is the coup de gras, Jennifer's peppermint. This is the first time we've had a peppermint actually live on the property. Every other time they've died. This one is overwintered. It has got itself good and settled in. And Jennifer should have peppermint forever now. And lastly, but not leastly, a little bit of time. And it's starting to flower. You gotta like that. They're such little pretty delicate things. Okay, well there you have it. I hope... You enjoyed getting a little walk through it would really help me out if you could comment down below and tell me what of all of that you are most interested in because when there's so many things there's there's the fish pond the raised beds the fruit trees and the swales um, just everything that i don't know sometimes uh, the grape arbor uh, all the new trees i i, I don't know what to shoot a video of and sometimes it feels like it's only fair to do a quick video like this quick being that every plant only gets 10 seconds of fame um, because i don't want to put out a video every single day saying here's the next tree here's the next plant here's the next flower uh, so i wonder if there's something in particular that you're the most interested in so that i can kind of focus my efforts and make sure that you guys are getting updates on the projects you care the most about now if you like seeing everything and you like quick little videos like this then hey that's great let me know that too uh, but if there's things that you want to see more of more frequently then hey i need to know or i don't know <laughs> i don't know what i don't know so let me know and that's a lot of knowing the more you know I should stop here. Thank you so much to all of our patrons who uh, make all these little projects even possible. And thanks to all of you who take the time out of your day to make our channel something special. Not just a place that houses hundreds and hundreds of videos, but also a place where we have a good community. Where there's lots of comments and follow-up. Good advice down in the comments for all of the viewers to come in and not just see what I'm doing, but also follow up and learn what you're doing as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, hey, by the way, you remember that clover field I planted when we moved the pigs? It has just gone stir crazy. And look, we're starting to get our white Ladino clover, the uh, LAS1 variety. And we've got our crimson clover coming up as well. That's pretty cool. With any luck, this will be just a bee haven any minute now. Oh, and the fig tree is growing, though it did have a little bit of issue with the frost we had just a few nights ago. But it looks like it's going to do pretty well, too. Never mind all the wild things growing, like a dogwood or a whole field of wild geranium. Good old henbit, you know it's springtime. Oh, hey, look at that. Chickweed. Plantago. Plantago, another kind. Defying death by power company. Yes, literally, they came in here to clear out under the lines and literally ran over elderberry. It's pretty cool. We'll be taking some clippings off of this and replanting some uh, shrubs elsewhere because this is just disgraceful. Okay, it's getting late. I really should stop doing this. You know, unless, of course, I run across our wild peach. Those petals have been spent, and this one's just about to bloom. That's a wild peach. We have no idea who dropped a pit out when. And it is not liking where it's growing, but it's growing. Okay, seriously. Smooth sumac. Mm -mm. Elliot blueberries. Those were flowers last you saw them.